The image of a knight clad in shining armor, mounted on a powerful steed, and charging fearlessly into battle is one of the most iconic symbols of the medieval era. This imagery wasn't fiction, the medieval cavalry shaped the course of wars, politics, and societies throughout the Middle Ages. This video delves into the, underscoring their undeniable impact. The concept of mounted warriors can be traced back to antiquity, with civilizations like the Persians, Greeks, and Romans employing cavalry units. However, these units mostly served as auxiliary forces, supplementing infantry phalanxes. The migration period circa 300 to 700 AD witnessed the emergence of various mounted warrior groups, most notably the Huns and Avars. One crucial invention during this period was the stirrup, which provided riders with better stability and control, revolutionizing mounted combat. Armor went through several evolutionary stages, from chain mail hauberks to full plate armor. The protection this armor offered allowed knights to be both a formidable offensive and defensive force on the battlefield. The lance became synonymous with the knight, designed for powerful charges. Accompanying this was the sword, ideal for close combat, and various other weapons such as maces and battle axes. Knights typically began their training as pages around the age of seven, advancing to squires in their teenage years and finally being knighted in a ceremonial rite. This rigorous training ensured that they became skilled warriors and understood chivalric codes. Throughout the Middle Ages, the cavalry was not a monolithic entity but rather a collection of diverse units, each tailored for specific battlefield roles. Knights, the quintessential image of medieval cavalry, knights were heavily armored warriors, often of noble birth. They were the shock troops mounted on powerful destriers, charging enemy lines with lances in the initial assault. Like cavalry, these were typically fast-moving troops, often armed with javelins or bows. Their primary roles included reconnaissance, skirmishing, and pursuing retreating enemies. Examples include the Turkish Akinci and Spanish Genetes. Horse archers, predominantly associated with the Mongols and Magyars, these mounted warriors combined mobility with long-range weaponry. They employed hit-and-run tactics, whittling down enemies from a distance before a decisive charge. Dragoons, emerging towards the end of the medieval period, dragoons were mounted infantry rather than true cavalry. They would ride to battle, dismount, and fight on foot. This combination allowed for rapid movement and tactical flexibility. Mounted sergeants, these were a lesser version of knights, often equipped with lighter armor and weapons. They supported the heavier knights in battle and sometimes acted as a reserve force. Each type of cavalry played its unique part on the medieval battlefield. Together, they showcase the tactical diversity and adaptability of mounted warfare during the Middle Ages. In medieval history, while knights bask in the limelight, their faithful steeds, the true engines of the cavalry, often remain overshadowed. These horses were not ordinary, they were specifically bred, trained, and equipped for the rigors of warfare. The Destrier, the most famous among the warhorses of the medieval era, was favored by knights and nobility. Powerful, agile, and often of a larger build than typical riding horses, destriers were prized possessions, sometimes even more valuable than land. Their ability to carry a fully armored knight into battle while maintaining speed and stamina was a testament to their strength. Training these horses was no less intense than training the knights themselves. They were taught to respond to leg pressure, voice commands, and the slightest shift in a rider's weight. Additionally, warhorses were acclimated to the chaos of battle, ensuring they wouldn't spook easily amidst the clamor of clashing weapons and shouting soldiers. Armor for horses, known as barding, was also developed, offering protection against enemy attacks. This armor, often elaborately decorated, included chanfrons to shield the horse's face and crinit to guard the neck. The bond between a knight and his horse was profound. This relationship was more than utilitarian, it was a deep partnership. Together, 
they formed a combined unit of trust, skill, and power. In remembering the bravery of medieval knights, it's essential also to honor the extraordinary horses that carried them into history. The primary role of the medieval cavalry was to act as shock troops. Using the momentum of a galloping horse, knights would crash into enemy lines with devastating effect, often determining the outcome of battles. Aside from charges, knights played various roles, such as flanking maneuvers, reconnaissance missions, and even dismounting to fight as elite infantry in certain terrains. Medieval cavalry's dominance on the battlefield was not just a result of individual prowess but also of strategic formations that maximized their impact. Formations were crucial for offense and defense, ensuring success against enemy contingents. One of the most iconic cavalry formations was the wedge or V formation. Designed for penetrating enemy lines, the point of the wedge would strike the opposing force, creating gaps for subsequent riders to exploit and cause disarray. The line formation was another tactic, where cavalrymen would ride shoulder to shoulder in a straight line. This was especially effective during a frontal charge, presenting a unified force that could trample or break through infantry lines. The circle or ring formation was employed for defense, especially when surrounded by or protecting a high-ranking individual. Horses would face outwards in a tight ring, with riders using their weapons to fend off attackers from all sides. The scouting or skirmishing formation also saw cavalry spread out, often riding in loose, staggered lines. This was used for reconnaissance, hit-and-run tactics, or to harass enemy flanks. These formations were not rigid and often adapted based on terrain, enemy strategy, and the specific objective of the battle. Mastery of these formations, combined with the strength and skill of both rider and steed, made medieval cavalry a formidable force in warfare. The effectiveness of cavalry in battle wasn't merely a result of strong horses or sturdy armor, it was a culmination of rigorous training that transformed ordinary men and horses into an unparalleled force on the battlefield. For a cavalryman, training began with the basics, mastering the art of riding. A cavalry recruit had to become one with his horse, understanding its movements, strengths, and vulnerabilities. Riding drills emphasized posture, control, and swift maneuvers, preparing the rider for the chaos of battle, where split-second decisions could mean the difference between life and death. Simultaneously, horsemanship wasn't the only skill in focus. Weapons training was paramount. Recruits practiced with lances, swords, and, in some cases, mounted archery. The aim was to strike, parry, and shoot while maintaining balance on a galloping horse. Mock battles and jousting tournaments further honed these skills, mimicking real battle scenarios. Equally important was the horse's training. War horses underwent rigorous routines to familiarize them with the noises, sights, and confusion of war. They were trained to charge fearlessly into formations, respond to voice and leg cues in the din of battle, and even kick or bite upon command. Endurance drills ensured that both horse and rider could sustain prolonged engagements, while tactical exercises taught cavalry units to operate cohesively, mastering formations, flanking maneuvers, and retreats. The fusion of these elements, discipline, and unwavering dedication produced a cavalry force that often became the deciding factor in medieval warfare. The significance of this intense training cannot be understated in understanding the success and dominance of cavalry across centuries. Founded in 1119, the Templars were warrior monks who played a pivotal role in the Crusades. They became renowned for their discipline, training, and effectiveness in battle. Although not knights in the European sense, the Mongol cavalry of the 13th century was arguably the most formidable mounted force in history known for their rapid movement, archery skills, and innovative tactics. Determining the best medieval cavalry requires an examination of various powers and their respective strengths over different eras of the Middle Ages. The Franks and the Carolingians, in the early medieval period, the Frankish heavy cavalry under Charlemagne became legendary, 
using their powerful armored horses to expand and solidify the Carolingian Empire. The Normans, their prowess was notably displayed at the Battle of Hastings in 1066. Using a blend of heavy cavalry tactics and archery, they reshaped the political landscape of England forever. The Mongols, arguably, the Mongol hordes of the 13th century were among the most formidable cavalry forces ever. Combining the lightning-fast tactics of horse archers with the brute strength of their heavy lancers, they carved out the largest contiguous empire in history. The Spanish Reconquista, by the late Middle Ages, the Iberian Peninsula witnessed the rise of specialized units like the Spanish Genetes, like cavalry skilled in using javelins and adept in guerrilla warfare. The best medieval cavalry varied based on the period, region, and specific tactical applications. Each of these groups, in their prime, exhibited unparalleled prowess, leaving an indelible mark on the history of mounted warfare. The medieval feudal system was intertwined with the rise of cavalry. Knights were often granted land by monarchs or lords in exchange for military service, establishing a socio-economic system where land, military service, and nobility were intrinsically linked. Beyond warfare, the concept of chivalry emerged, defining a code of conduct for knights. This code emphasized virtues like courage, loyalty, and courtesy, influencing societal norms and values. The debate over cavalry supremacy versus infantry in the Middle Ages isn't straightforward. The effectiveness of each depended on various factors, including terrain, tactics, weaponry, and the nature of the conflict. Cavalry, especially heavy knights, held a distinct advantage for much of the early and high Middle Ages. Their rapid mobility, combined with the shock of a mounted charge, often rendered opposing infantry lines vulnerable. A well-timed cavalry charge could prove decisive in open terrains, breaking enemy formations and causing havoc. Yet, as the medieval period progressed, infantry tactics and equipment developments began to challenge the cavalry's dominance. The introduction of weapons like the pike and longbow meant that well-drilled infantry could withstand and even repel cavalry charges. The Battle of Cressy in 1346 is a prominent example, where English longbowmen decimated French knights, showcasing the vulnerabilities of cavalry against prepared infantry. Furthermore, in rough or densely wooded terrains, the mobility advantage of cavalry was negated, allowing infantry to hold their ground effectively. Therefore, while cavalry had distinct mobility and shock value advantages during many medieval engagements, they weren't universally better than infantry. The evolving nature of warfare, tactical innovations, and specific battle conditions often determined the effectiveness of each force, making it essential to recognize the unique strengths and vulnerabilities of both. Throughout the Middle Ages, cavalry played pivotal roles in numerous battles, often turning the tide and scripting history. Here's a glimpse into some of the most significant engagements where the cavalry's impact was undeniable. Battle of Hastings, one of the most iconic battles in English history, the Battle of Hastings saw Norman cavalry, led by William the Conqueror, employ a combination of archers, infantry, and knights. The cavalry feigned retreats, drawing the Anglo-Saxon infantry out of position and then striking back with devastating charges, eventually leading to a Norman victory and the commencement of Norman rule in England. Battle of Bouvines This was a monumental clash between the forces of King Philip II of France and a coalition army led by the Holy Roman Emperor Otto IV. The French knights, demonstrating superior tactics and cohesion, repeatedly charged the enemy lines, breaking the coalition's ranks and securing a pivotal victory that solidified the French monarchy's power. Battle of Legnitsa, facing the might of the Mongol Empire, the European forces, primarily Polish cavalry, engaged the Mongols near Legnitsa. The Mongol horse archers, showcasing their unparalleled mobility and archery skills, whittled down the European cavalry. Subsequent heavy cavalry charges from the Mongols crushed the remaining resistance, underscoring their dominance in mounted warfare. Battle of Cressy, 
a part of the Hundred Years' War, the Battle of Cressy saw a decisive English victory against the French. Though this battle is often cited for the effectiveness of the English longbowmen, it's also a lesson in the limitations of cavalry. In repeated cavalry charges against well-prepared defensive positions, the French knights faced devastating losses, marking a shift in medieval battle tactics. Each of these battles, in their own right, underscores the significance of cavalry in medieval warfare. Whether through strategic genius, raw power, or lessons from defeat, the mounted warriors of the Middle Ages have left an indelible mark on the annals of military history. The Battle of Cressy marked a turning point where English longbowmen decimated the French cavalry. This and similar encounters showcase the vulnerabilities of cavalry against well-equipped and disciplined infantry. The introduction of firearms and cannons further reduced the dominance of cavalry. By the late medieval period, armies with a mix of pikemen, musketeers, and artillery began to overshadow traditional knightly cavalry. The medieval cavalry, epitomized by the armored knight, stood as a powerful symbol and force for centuries. Their role in battles, intertwined relationship with the feudal system, and influence on medieval culture solidified their place in history. While their dominance waned with technological and tactical changes, the legacy of the medieval cavalry remains, echoing tales of courage, chivalry, and epic battles of yore. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe for more videos.